How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. And today, for you beginners out there, I want to talk about web hosting and what exactly is web hosting and the types of web hosting, so on and so forth. And I'll talk about a couple of web hosting providers that I really like. That'll be Hostinger and Bluehost. Uh, and if you guys are interested in any of these web hosting providers, by the way, you'll find links to pricing and discounts in the description down below if you'd like to jump straight to that. And you will find full reviews if you'd like to learn more about them. Now, whether it's a news feed, a blogging community, or a shopping platform, every website needs somewhere to live. That's what I mean by web hosting or hosting. If you want to start a website or a blog, you need the same thing. But hosting can be confusing. And if you're not a techie, how do you cut through the jar? Bargain or know what website hosting service you need. Don't worry, in this video, I'll get into how web hosting works, what web hosting services and domain names are, the different web hosting plans and types, and how much web hosting costs. So let's start with the definition itself. Web hosting is a service that lets you get a website or web page go live on the internet. Just as you need somewhere to live, so does your website online. The files that make up your website are stored at this virtual location on a web server. So how does web hosting work? Let's imagine a web user enters your site's address into their URL. They access your site and their computer connects to your server. Your website is then delivered to them from the server through the browser. But with countless servers, how does your site appear in front of them? Well, servers come with IP addresses, a series of numbers that identify a particular computer. Of course, you also have your personal IP address. The internet is made up of a gigantic network of computers linked through cables, a bit like a spider's web. Now, while every website has an IP address, you're not going to enter the IP address because they're very difficult to remember. That's where domain names come in. They convert IP addresses into easy to remember words and mark each web page out from each other. They work like the street name and number of a bricks and mortar property. You need a domain name and hosting if you want to run a website. Now, buying a domain name normally gives you rights to the name for one year, at which point you can renew your license. You can, of course, buy a domain name and hosting from the same provider, which is why I have two of the best hosting providers that provide all kinds of hosting types and domain names. This can save you having to manually match up your domain name to your hosting company. Managing and renewing both services is easier if you buy them from the same place. Now, how much does web hosting cost? Well, it all depends on what you're looking for. So if you're looking to start a small blog or a small online store, you can actually get yourself the shared web hosting plan, uh, which won't really cost that much. But if you're opening a bigger store, of course, you will need bigger resources and more storage. This is where you can go to cloud hosting, which will, of course, cost a little bit more money. Uh, VPS hosting or WordPress hosting is also another type of hosting. And that'll be my next topic. But before we talk about hosting types, a quick word on what to look out when comparing web hosting plans. The key features of any hosting plan are disk space, email accounts, and bandwidth. Now, disk space is how much space you have to store your website's files. Before comparing hosting packages, work out how much space you need. Things like emails, web files, and databases take up space. Work out your usage requirements so that you get an appropriate plan. Especially if your website has a lot of photos and uh, videos, you're going to need a lot of space. Now, with regards to accounts, this will include a uh, top three or normal inboxes, forwarding accounts, and alias accounts. With normal inboxes, the server will provide some space for you to store your emails. A login and a password usually equals one account. With forwarding accounts, they're handy if you employ another company to filter emails for you. Instead of storing your emails on your server, emails are forwarded on to another address. In alias accounts, similar to forwarding accounts, some hosts may let you set up a catch-all alias. These are often used to collect emails sent to addresses not identified by your mail server. And bandwidth, to you, bandwidth is the capacity of your website to deal with data. The more bandwidth you have, the more traffic you can handle. Some web hosting services offer unmetered bandwidth. This means you're not charged for what you use. And if you exceed your allowance, your hosting provider will simply notify you. Of course, extra products that are worth considering are anti-hacking software and automatic backups. 
The big one though is SSL certificates and most hosting providers that are worth their salt will offer unlimited free SSL on all of their plans no matter how cheap they are. An SSL certificate is a must. Suppliers often charge over $100 for SSL certificates and a hosting package that includes one in its plan is really good value which is why I have these two providers uh, suggested. Especially Hostinger. If you're looking for a value option hostinger will give you so much for little money now the main hosting types are shared web hosting vps hosting dedicated hosting and of course cloud hosting and other web hosting types such as wordpress hosting and whatnot but today we'll be talking about these four so starting with shared web hosting the clues in the name use the same server as a bunch of other websites because you split the server, it's the cheapest hosting option around. The main downside is that your website's performance can be affected by the sites you share the server with. If they use up too much technical resources, your site can slow down. Though they are good if you're just launching your small business or a web page online, or run a small website with modest traffic and want to keep costs down. Now, dedicated hosting, for example, as you can tell, is way more expensive and Bluehost is generally a little bit more expensive than Hostinger but a dedicated web hosting service is where you are the sole tenant of a server your site's performance won't be affected negatively by other websites you also get more tech resource and better security this autonomy and level of service does come at a price and dedicated hosting packages cost a whole lot more than shared ones though this is really good if your site is growing fast and traffic is increasing rapidly. If you're a business or online store, dedicated hosting is right if you're generating solid virtual footfall and sales. Dedicated hosting is perfect if you need lots of disk space. For example, you've got a big email database. But you also may be able to replace dedicated hosting with VPS hosting, especially if you go with Hostinger, since you can go all the way up to VPS 8, which will give you a whole lot of resources to uh, handle the biggest website ever, really. And this is the next type of hosting, and VPS stands for Virtual Private Server. This hosting option is where you share the server, but you get your own distinct area. So hardware is split with other websites, but you get your own computing resources. It's a good halfway point between cheaper shared and more expensive dedicated hosting. You can upgrade your site's bandwidth and storage without sending your bills soaring, and you get more flexibility and control. This is great if your web page is about to outgrow a shared hosting package, but you don't want to commit to a dedicated plan. Now, finally, cloud hosting is where the resources your site needs to operate are spread across multiple servers. This collection of servers is what's called the cloud. It means there's less chance of downtime because of server malfunction. If one fails, another can step in. Plus, because of the extra support, you can handle large volumes of traffic without suffering bandwidth issues whatsoever. Cloud hosting is arguably more reliable than a dedicated hosting package, and it's even cheaper. It's great if you run a fast-growing site and expect to see surges in traffic. For example, if you might run a paid marketing campaign online. So that is pretty much it for this video. The thing about web hosting is that everyone at the end of the day needs it if you're trying to launch a website, whether you're a multinational online giant or a one-man band photographer. If you have a website, you need to sort out hosting. There's no shortage of options and it can be difficult to know where to start, especially if you're not a techie. So hopefully in this video, I kind of gave you a bit of an introduction of what web hosting is like and the best hosting providers to choose, uh, such as Hostinger and Bluehost. But if you are a beginner indeed, I would definitely choose Hostinger since it offers so many features and it's definitely quite a bit cheaper and arguably offers the same service if not even more resources than uh, Bluehost in most cases. So if you guys are interested in Bluehost or Hostinger, be sure to check the reviews as well as special discounts 
in the description down below. Besides that, both of these providers will offer 30 day money back guarantees. So you can test drive these uh, web hosting providers for 30 days risk free. Otherwise, if you're not satisfied, you can simply claim the refund. Besides that, comment below if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer all of them. Like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.